In this lesson, I would like to make it more practical and we will put uh, the, the knowledge that we gained at the last lesson into test um, and create such a parametric furniture table. Um, I will also give you a list of requirements, list of parameters. So if you want to do it on your own and later go back and see how I made it, it's okay. So, so you can uh, really um, face the problems uh, and try to solve it yourself. I guess this is the best way of learning to uh, learning by making mistakes and you can go back and try to see how I made it. As I said, there are multiple ways of creating one family, so you don't have to do it one to one as as I am doing, but the results the result and uh, should, should be the same. So Let's start from scratch. I will close this family and create new. And this time I will search for metric furniture template. Okay, I click open. This template doesn't has, have anything special in it. It looks practically the same as generic model. But of course, if I go to family category and parameters, the furniture parameter will be active. Okay. So first thing is always to draw reference planes. So this one will be used for tabletop. You may see that I am starting drawing the lines and ending at the same place. So they are look nicely uh, in the view. But of course, the length of this reference plane doesn't matter. Uh, I will go now to front and draw another one. Create reference plane. You see that uh, there is a shortcut RP that you can remember or you can create your own shortcuts. I will not use shortcuts so you see everything I'm doing on the screen but I recommend you to use them. I will add it to quick access toolbar because as you can see I am using this tool very often. I name this plane top and uh, what else? Let's do dimensioning. You see that the, the first steps are very similar. Usually you want to create reference plane that are core of our family. So this will be width. This will be depth. And here I will create another dimension. And uh, you see that I can dimension according to reference level. And there is a reference plane at the same place as if it was uh, stick together with reference level. So I remember that I had some problems when I uh, measured to reference level. So I recommend you to use a tab key in order to select reference plane. You see that the dashes are denser on reference plane than on reference line. So it's easy to distinguish. I reference this one and this one uh, and gave it give it a new parameter of height. Okay, so once we have our reference place for table, we can go to create extrusion. I will go create extrusion and use rectangle. I will set the reference plane to top as it is a tabletop. So I am drawing a rectangle and the padlocks automatically appears. I should lock them. If for, for some reason you forgot to lock them at it all, at, and it all disappeared, you have two methods to evoke the padlock. First is dragging out and in so the padlock appears again and the second option is using a line tool. I click reference plane and then parallel line and close the padlock. Okay, first step is ready. Let's go to the front view and change the value of extrusion end. This is too thick so I will enter a negative value of minus 40 and 
0 here. Of course, I can also parameterize this value, but since this is a constant 40 centimeters and it always be 40 centimeters no matter what is the type, there is no need for me to create a new parameter and over constraint my family. Uh, there is this temptation to create as much parameters as possible and the thinking is that maybe for, for some reason it will be helpful in the future so I will try to parameterize everything. I think that it shouldn't be always the case and uh, you just should be keep it minimalistic as possible. So since this value will not change in the future I don't want to confuse a future user and modify it to some strange values and possibly disrupt the, the whole family. So I will just keep it uh, a, a constant value of minus 40. Uh, 